Thank you once again on Crunch Econometrics. Today, we are looking at VAR and three ways causality checks in Stata. So what exactly is causality? You can respond to that if you are told that J causes Q and you will be correct to interpret such as any of these statements depending on your area of specialization and or disciplines. You could say that J leads Q or that J is the only cause of Q. J is only one of the possible causes of Q. J must always lead to Q. That is, J determines Q. The occurrence of J makes the occurrence of Q more probable. J is a probabilistic cause of Q. You can say that J must occur either before or simultaneously with Q, but not later. You can say the past values of J forecast future values of Q. Any of these can easily explain that J causes Q. Talking about causality in time series analysis. We all know that regression analysis deals with the dependence of one variable on other variables, but that does not necessarily imply causation. In other words, the existence of a relationship between variables does not prove causality or the direction of influence. But when the regression involves time series data, the situation is somehow different. A statistical relationship in itself cannot logically imply causation, but you can prove that or test that using some scientific means. To ascribe causation, one must appeal to either a priori expectations or theoretical considerations. In regression modeling, the underlying theory will indicate the direction of causality between the two variables which in the context of a single equation is generally from the regressor to the dependent variable. And always know that the future cannot predict the past. The reverse is the case. So what are some statutory conditions that must be fulfilled before you can engage causality checks within the VAR framework? Number one, the series in question must be stationary, integrated of the same order. They must be stationary at first difference, definitely not at second difference. The number of lags you are going to use in that model must be carefully selected using the uh, information criterion. Then make sure that the error terms entering the causality test are not correlated. If you are going to run a VECM, that is a vector error correction model, there must be evidence of cointegration either between or among the variables. Although cointegration indicates presence of Granger causality in at least one direction, it does not indicate the direction of causality between the variables. For you to know the direction of causality, it can be detected through the error correction model derived from the long-run cointegrating vectors. On the screen is a three-variable VAR model. I'm using this particular model to be consistent with some of my VAR tutorials, particularly those I'm using the Stata application for. So if you are going through my VAR uh, tutorials on Stata, you'll be familiar with this three variable VAR model you are seeing on the screen. And we all know that in a VAR model, there are no exogenous variables. All the variables are endogenous and the dependent variable is a function of its own lag values and the lag values of other um, endogenous variables in the system. So looking at the way this model is specified, you can easily see where the lag value of the dependent variable is located. Another um, salient feature of the VAR model is that all the variables have equal lags, K lags across all the variables in the system. Unlike what obtains in an ARDL model, where the variables can take different lags. In a VAR model, all the variables have the same lags. So looking at the model specification here, you can see all the constants listed. And these are the intercepts. The betas, the phi's, and the gammas indicate the short-run coefficients of the model's adjustment to long-run equilibrium, while the u's are just the stochastic error terms or shocks in the language of VAR. So this is a simple form of uh, specifying a VAR model. So what are the types of causality? Number one, we have short-run causal effects, which can be detected either using the S statistics or the statistical significance of the regressors. We have long-run causal effects, which you can know through the statistical significance of the error correction term 
that is if you are running the vacuum. Another type of causality is the joint causal effect, which is from using the F statistics, the significance of the independent variables, and the statistical significance of the error correction term. One more time, this applies if you are running only the vacuum. What do you understand by unidirectional causality? This occurs from J to Q if the set of estimated coefficients of the lagged J are significantly different from zero and the set of estimated coefficients of lagged Q are not significantly different from zero. Whenever you hear the term significantly different from zero, it means that coefficient is statistically significant. And when you hear not significantly different from zero, it means that coefficient is not statistically significant. So I'm going to use a three variable VAR model to explain this unidirectional causality and every other causality. So trying to explain the unidirectional causality in a more vivid form using the PDI equation alone. Let me assume that the PDI equation in this case is Q and PCE is the J. A unidirectional causality will occur if all the lagged values of PCE are significant in the PDI equation. Now, in the PCE equation, if all the lagged values of the PDI regressors are not significant, then we can conclude that there is a unidirectional causality from PCE to PDI. Now, how do we explain bidirectional causality? Still using the PDI and the PCE equations. If the lagged values of the PCE variable are statistically significant in the PDI equation and the lagged values of the PDI regressors here are statistically significant in the PCE equation, then we can conclude that there is a bidirectional causality from PCE to PDI and vice versa. So now trying to explain independent causality. I believe that by now you have an idea how to go about that. It simply means that the lagged coefficients of each of these uh, variables are not significant in either equation. So that means for the PDI equation, the lagged values of PCE are not statistically significant, while in the PC equation, the lag values of PDI are not statistically significant. So that means both variables do not influence one another. So that is independent causality. So I've explained this using the three variable VAR model. I've also explained bidirectional and I've also explained independent causality. So what are the three ways by which we can check for causality in a VAR model using Stata? The first way is using the regressor's T statistics. If they are statistically significant, then we can infer causality. So that is one way to check. Another way to check is by using the pairwise Granger causality test, which tells us the direction of causality. The null hypothesis of that test is that there is no Granger causality against the alternative that the null hypothesis is not true. So what will be the decision criteria? The null hypothesis is rejected if the prof value of the chi-square statistic is lower or equal to 0.05. So that is the pairwise Granger causality. The third way to detect causality is using the world coefficient test. The null hypothesis is that the lagged values of the regressors are equal to zero, that is not significant to influence the dependent variable, against the alternative that these coefficients are not equal to zero. And what would be the decision criteria? Reject the null hypothesis if the probability value of the chi-square statistic is lower or equal to 0.05. So what are the step-by-step -step procedure? First thing first, always specify your model. I've shown you how to do that. Second step, perform the stationarity test. Determine the optimal lags. Estimate the unrestricted VAR. Then perform the causality test using the three ways I just outlined then go ahead to perform some diagnostics. So in conclusion, the t statistics of the explanatory variables will always indicate short-run causal effects. 
The chi-square statistics from either the grandeur and the war test will also indicate short-run causal effects. Know that each of these causality checks can serve as robustness or evidence of validation for one another. In case you need to read up on VAR and causality checks, I will encourage you to consult any of these references and so many simple econometrics textbooks out there. Consult journal articles, look at how they conducted their causality checks and how they analyzed their results. Thank you for watching. Please don't go away. In my next video, I'm going to put you through on how to uh, check for causality using all the three approaches.